Welcome back, everybody. My name is Phil, and I'm joined once again by a very special guest who is Sean Vickers from Unflopped. Hi, Sean. Hello. How is everyone? Uh, and how are you, Phil? I'm good. Are you good? I'm fine, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled today to be talking about some of the short movies that are currently playing Amazing. as part of London Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll do that in a second. First, I want to ask you how it's going for you. How are you, how are you rating the BFI London Film Festival experience? I'm, I'm just going to say LFF. It's a lot shorter, isn't it? LFF. Let's just say LFF. Hashtag LFF. LFF it's 2020. great. I'm actually super enjoying it. Um, obviously, my brain's trying to process a lot of, <laughs> of film but uh, it's brilliant. I think um, the uh, the selections have been fab. Uh, no, very much enjoying it. How about you? Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, so much so that yesterday I was lying on my bed with the curtains closed. I, I sound like a teenager, but it's true. I had the dog at my knee. Uh, he was being really nice and cuddly. I thought to myself, you know, w- when would I get this experience at the BFI itself? But then I do miss that. I, I miss the public screenings. Yeah, same, same. But we are where we are uh, and I have to say, I think they've done a fantastic job of being able to bring such a, a, such a wealth of film um, to film lovers all over the, all over the UK and wider. So fab, absolutely, great. yeah. Joking aside, um, I do like the comfort of it, but I think they've they've really pulled it off with the program. There's so many great movies to watch, and we have watched a, uh, quite a lot of those already. So yeah. check some of the other previous reviews out. But I'm really interested to hear what you think of the shorts, though, because I haven't actually touched on the shorts yet. I'm hoping to do that over the weekend. So um, I'm still working through because there is a wealth, there's a wealth of, of short movies are available um, to watch. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about a few today. Um, obviously, short movies are short, but they they can they can often pack a punch, and that's what I love about them. So you you're really not sure what you're going to get, um, and you dive in and you find some real gems. So I'm going to talk through some of those today. Um, so, shall I kick off, Phil? Fabulous, yes. Hit, hit me with your best shot, as um, Pat Benatar once said. Was it well, Pat Benatar? Pat Benatar, I think that, but that's a really good tie-in to my first film, which is Shuttlecock. Oh, <laughs> Hit me with your Shuttlecock, <laughs> um, which is a film directed by Tommy Gillard, and it's set in the homoerotic world of charity badminton. I love this. I love the the setup for this. I'm intrigued already. <laughs> yeah. So it basically is a short film which follows initially the life of Carl, who is this kind of alpha male badminton player in kind of a, a charity hall. Uh, sorry, like a community hall. And they're doing a charity event. And he's like the kingpin of the gang. Um, and he always wins all the tournaments. And then out of nowhere, this chap called Morgan appears, who's almost like the opposite to him in every way. He's not showy. He's quite diminutive. And it basically plays into the what will lead into those two of them playing um, uh, a badminton game. But what's so brilliant is how it's filmed. So it's this kind of like male gaze, homoerotic story. It starts with kind of sweat dripping off a shuttlecock. And kind of, that kind of sets the entire tone for it. Uh, it's one of my favourites so far. I think it's really well done. Uh, the acting is brilliant. Of course, a short film. But, uh, yeah, that's one I would say to watch, it's, Shuttlecock. Sounds really good. I've got to say hello to Simeon Costello, who sent us a message, actually, saying, uh, are you going to be seeing it? Because I'd really love to hear your opinions on it. And I'm sure that he's going to be thrilled by your response to that. I've got a funny story also about Shuttlecocks. Go uh, on. I went to see Wham! in the 80s at Cornwall Coliseum in St. Austell in Cornwall. And they were putting Shuttlecocks down their shorts and throwing them out into the crowd. Actually, not a surprise. Yeah. Not a surprise, not a surprise. Well, absolutely. I, I remember as a 14-year-old, 15-year-old at the time, uh, being quite aroused by that. I'm not, no, I don't mean aroused, does it? That, that's lowering the tone completely, I know. But I got quite excited by this, but there were no other boys in the audience. It was just all women screaming, screaming their heads off. And quite well, rightly so. Yeah, we've gone off on a tangent, haven't we? But that's, but I think that's that perfectly sums up Shortcock. <laughs> uh, so that is one of my definite thumbs up of the shorts. So get into Shortcock. Another one of my favourites is a film called Passage, um, directed by Anne Oren. Now this is, it goes in an entirely different tangent. So it's part of the speculative features. And it starts with um, the queer um, performer and artist. I'm going to have to read this because I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah. Simone Jaikraimu Paito. I'm glad and you did that, actually. Not me. Welcome. I've probably got it wrong. Don't at me, anyone. Um, and um, it, it starts with um, a horse on a screen. 
and then it cuts to Simone, who is creating the sounds. Uh, there's a name for it, but basically they're doing the sound effects for the horse cantering, and they've got kind of like coconut shells, and they're moving around. But gradually it moves into a piece of performance where Simone is wearing a horse tail and basically moving around and performing like a horse. It is really quite stunning. It's beautifully filmed and is, yeah, I, it, it was fab. It was as pure escapism. And it, I thought it was, it was actually very powerful and lovely. So another big thumb up for me, Passage. That's what we need at the moment as well, isn't it? Pure escapism. I love it. That That's going on the billboard poster. Pure escapism. Sean Vickers said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't quote what I said about the previous film. <laughs> that could be something else completely. Yeah, something for another video, that maybe. It. Definitely keep that in. Um, <laughs> next, I'm going to go to something a bit darker. Uh, and it's a film. It's a short film called Buck. It's by the director is Elegance Breton. And it follows the story of Lynn, who is uh, a young black guy um, who is on the... I don't know, he's in this exploratory world of kind of hedonism and um, self-discovery and someone who self-identifies as being kind of a, a depressed and how he explores the kind of like queer underworld uh, and quite sinister queer underworld as a way of escapism. Again, incredibly powerful. And I say powerful a lot on this show. Powerful. It's <laughs> um, a good word though, isn't it? It is. But I mean, it, again, it's, it's a very short piece of film, but really about him finding his way. Yeah. How he delves into kind of the dark underworld of kind of sex parties and whatnot as a way of trying to find some form of some, some kind of path or some kind of uh, journey through his depression. Has it uh, stayed with you? Is this something that you saw recently? Was yeah, it yesterday? Absolutely. So it very recently. Saw it this week absolutely stayed with me it's so honestly acted you know and it's believable let's put it that way the way the way he explores this world and the world that we know is is very very well portrayed um so another one that i would recommend very different tone um to the previous two but something a bit heavier um but but again powerful <laughs> amazing I'm, I'm taking notes by the way i'm going to be checking out all of these that you're suggesting and all thumbs up for all of them so far, which is so pretty far, encouraging. All I am, I am going to do the ooh, shortly. So I'm just going to do the ones that I really love. First. Save that so to I'm the really, end. Let's not dampen I'm this. Like, oh, <laughs> maybe avoid. Um, the next one I want to go to is a film called Dungarees. It's directed by Abel Rubenstein, and it follows the day-to-day -day life of a a transgender individual and a cisgender individual who are in a couple, and basically just living their life in in the most normal way. So it's a regular film about them just being a couple and hanging out. And there's something really beautiful about it. It's incredibly short. I think it's like five minutes or four minutes, but it's wonderful. And yeah, it just follows the life of these two gorgeous human beings, just being in love with each other and living their life. And that's there's something quite fab about it because it's just like a window into their world. Uh, and I absolutely loved it. So dungarees. I love it. Um, and it's it five minutes. Like, You've got no excuse not to you see You literally that. blink and you miss it. Yeah. Uh, short is um, sweet. It's it's short and sweet. Exactly. Uh, but I loved it. It's one of, one of my favourites. So it's definitely up there with the others. So those four, uh, and there's one more that I really love, which I want to talk about, which is called The Name of the Sun. It's a family on a beach. And uh, it's a father and his uh, son and daughter. His son recently transitioned. And it really is quite uh, a heartfelt story about a teenage a teenage boy just being a teenage boy and trying to deal with something quite big uh, as, a, as a trans teenager. And then kind of the love, like the familial love of his sister and also his father. Uh, which is absolutely beautiful. Sounds um, really poignant. So, and, and these are the sort of films that would do really well at the BFI Flair Festival as well. It's really nice to see that reflected in the London Film Festival. Yeah, exactly. Those, the last three, maybe I mentioned, yeah, Buck, Dungarees and The Name of the Sun absolutely would do very well at Flair. And Shellcock as well. And Shul actually, and Shellcock, you're right. Um, there's a theme about the, the theme about the short films that I watch. <laughs> maybe you've worked it out. Um, but certainly I think Buck, and I didn't mention this earlier, is one of those shorts that could become a feature. It just has enough kind of story and content to go to go into that. So just, I don't know, that's how, when I watched it, I was like, oh, I, I want an hour of this. I want, you know, 90 minutes of this. I don't want 10 don't minutes. I think that's great, though? Because I think it's always yeah. good to leave an audience wanting more. And I think it sounds like, you know, the, these shorts are, are making you 
quite quite passionate about that and, and wanting yeah. to see more of that kind of work. And, and especially, I suppose, with those directors and those actors, you're you're you know you're kind of delve into their into their future work. I would definitely do that for sure. Um, and again, I'm, I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to keep watching the shorts. I haven't. There's a lot on there, but I'm gradually working through the ones I want to see. Then there's two I want to kind of finish up with, which were a bit. <laughs> Put the noose on. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't that bad. Okay. But because I was so impressed with the ones that I've mentioned that they kind of fell a bit short. The first one is a film called Salsa by Igor Dimitri. And it's set in a Buenos Aires hairdressing salon. I love the sound of that. So do I. I mean, instantly I'm like, sold, sign me up. Yeah. It, it's really hard to explain because it, it looks lovely. It doesn't really go anywhere. And I, and I don't mind that at times, but it left me a little cold. Mm. Um, and so, again, I think like like your your response for it was like, oh, that sounds mega. Yeah, such a good like, premise, oh, this isn't it? Brill. And there's some, there's some touching moments in it, but it just personally it didn't land for me but it, it was beautifully shot um so, but that may be your vibe and if it is your vibe salsa is the short film for you cool and i'll let you know if i think you know oh, similar wave, wavelength for that one so what's the final <laughs> one so the final one i'm predicting is a definite family fortunes eh, eh. am i well, wrong the fi- well i'll tell you this again is it's like subjective and i think it's when you see a lot of short films but the final one is, is mother by jas pitt and it follows a group of Vogas in Rio de Janeiro. Again, great premise. Why would you not love it? I know. And yeah, so it follows the story of a group of Vogas in Rio de Janeiro. You see a window into their life and how things uh, are. I'm going to say something which is probably going to be sound a bit outrageous, but I'm slightly vogued out. Uh. <laughs> um, and so another, there was another house of and another Vogue. And I was a bit like, okay, get it. And I, I think it's really powerful. And it's super important. Of course, it's really important. And there's a sense of community. I just feel like I've reached peak Vogue. There's Poe, of course there's Poe's, there's elements of Drag Race. And there's it, a documentary that I watched very recently about about drag, about drag uh, a house in uh, in Liverpool. Yeah, that's the uh, one I saw, that's um, the one I'm referring to. Yeah, I know there are quite a few, aren't there? Yeah, and I and I, I actually love those kinds of There's a film by Jamal Sims that I saw last year, which I absolutely adored, which was set in Atlanta, which wasn't particularly about Vogue, but it was about dance groups. And so I'm I, I naturally lean towards these kind of films. Um, but there was something about this in which, again, it's subjective. It just didn't land for me. And I just think I'm a bit of peak Vogue. You're a bit burnt way. out with it all. But you're yeah. absolutely right, because I suppose RuPaul's Drag Race has put put the voguing thing on the map. A lot of people who didn't necessarily know the history of it uh, are now experiencing it and now learning. And, and I guess young people as well. A lot of young people of don't necessarily know know about the history of it. And I'm not dismissing it at all. It's actually, it's, it's so important for our community and it's such a glue. It's just from a cinematic perspective. It's like, you know, it's like when you hear the same, like, you know, at the moment we're going through a disco revival and every artist puts a disco up. At some point you get to like, please no more. Yeah. I don't hate it, but please no more. And I feel like I'm at that point with, with voguing. Yeah, it's the same Sorry, tropes, everyone. isn't it? It's the same with horror films as well. They use all the same tricks. Yeah. There's only so, so there much we you can do with it unless you do something completely original. Exactly. And, uh, you know, that na- kind of like gritty narrative of like, you know, I, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a well, it's a well trodden path. It's a bit hashtag Vogue meh. <laughs> let's, put that, let's make that into, let's IRL that hashtag Vogue meh. <laughs> I'm claiming it, I'm claiming it, I want yours. money. <laughs> That's it, yours. Um, so yes, yeah, so they're my, they're my current seven shorts. There will be more to come. Uh, but um, yeah, the initial five that I mentioned, you know, if you've got an hour in your day, you can see five juicy, gorgeous pieces of the film. Fabulous. It's always good to see you, Sean. I can't wait for the next one. And you're going to be back soon because you've got lots more in the can. Very soon. That's overflowing. (laughs) See you soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe.